All right, let's talk about DeAndre Swift of the Detroit Lions, or I, guess I, should, I should say formerly of the Detroit Lions, now of the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. He has one year of control, so sen- essentially a one-year rental, uh, and a fourth-round pick is what the Philadelphia Eagles gave up for him. So what are they getting back? What are getting back a very unique running back? A lot of running backs, sometimes this stuff is you know relatively simple. Oh, they hit the hole that they're supposed to hit, blah, blah, blah. Swift definitely has a bit more of a unique style than some other running backs do. I think a play like this definitely showcases the good that you see in Swift, where watch what happens when this play begins. So right when it starts, Swift looks to be running towards the offense's right, and the reality is that's where most running backs go in this scenario. They go to the offense's right. You see how there is a running lane to get some yards right there. Now, he could sort of go uh, straight up the middle, straight towards that Detroit Lions logo. That's another option that he has on the table. But I think what makes Swift such a unique player is that he sometimes sees holes that aren't there. The reality is he is the baseball player player that's trying to hit a home run every single time he's at the plate. He is the Joey Gallo of football where he is not going up there trying to hit singles. That's not his game. Watch him go all the way over towards the left and it works out. He got the safety out of position and he was just gone at that point able to pick up a ton of yards not quite able to get the touchdown but hey you'll take that play that is a sw- swing for defenses and it, I don't know I guess it wasn't a touchdown so it maybe was a triple or something whatever you want to say getting those splash plays is what Swift is trying to do and trying to do consistently and it obviously has its pros and its cons there are obviously some plays where you know It doesn't make sense to bounce things to the outside, and he still tries to, and those can tend to be some, you know, issues. But at the same time, uh, does the good outweigh the bad? I think the good does outweigh the bad with Swift, uh, at least as of right now. So I do think that he is definitely a valuable player. The question is how much. There are also moments like this where you will see him get his team out of trouble at times, I think, where what's going to happen on this play is it's going to be a designed run to the left side of the screen. That's where they're going right here. However, right when this play begins, it is not going too good. Now, this is the, again, the pro and the con of Swift is I think a lot of players would have just kind of ran directly into that, uh, you know, Washington player. But again, the pro here is that he's not going to do that. Watch him sidestep and be able to, hey, got it to back the line of scrimmage, back to the line of scrimmage. Again, there wasn't anything there, but there was actually negative yards available for him, and he was able to get it up to zero. So yes, sometimes there are such thing as good uh, rushes for zero yards, and to me, that was one of them by Swift. So I keep saying it's a pro and a con because I'm showing pros. I do wonder, though, for the Philadelphia offense, which a lot of these holes are actually pretty simple and pretty wide open, I do wonder, maybe I get a little concerned with Swift. Could he miss some of those holes? Could he not go there uh, and try to avoid the contact when the reality is him you know, just going through the hole might be the right play sometimes. But as I said, I think the good outweighs the bad, so it's not something I'm like massively concerned about or anything, but just something to bring up. And there are moments like this, too, where I I would say uh, there's moments when he understands the assignment. He's not a dumb player or anything like that. He's not, you know, while I say he is always trying to hit home runs, he does tend to recognize, I feel like, one that's just not an option and one you just have to put your head down and go. Like something like this, for example, is going to be another, uh, you know, good example of this where it's going to be a handoff to the right side of the screen, which is towards the offense's left. And one of the blocks that's going to be important to note here is the right guard uh, is going to try to block an interior defensive lineman, and it's not going to go too well. Watch how very early on into this play, he's able to get into the backfield, and it, it was a tough block. I'm not going to crush him for it. Those are tough to pull off, but you're in a situation now where for Swift, again, uh, I do think that, you know, if, you, if you're if you just a pure home run hitter, maybe you're trying to make something happen and, you know, shift around and see if you can, you know, g- get crazy here. You definitely see, like, college players or, or like, rookies sometimes doing that. Uh, Swift, no. He understands, hey, this is going to be a loss. Uh, not going to be a great play. Let's just try to make the most of it. And again, that's what he does. Understood the assignment, got the yards he could get there. So someone who, he definitely wants to hit home runs. That's definitely his mindset. But if there isn't a home run there, he will just say, okay, you know what? I will take the pitch that's five feet out of the zone. I will take the ball there. Uh, That's definitely something he will do as well to continue the baseball analogy, which apparently I'm just going to keep this whole video. And, you know, one thing also, going over to something like this, I talk about his sort of home run hitting ability. Usually guys that are big home run hitters, uh, 
you know, at the running back position, it's because of how good they are in open space. And there's this extra asset there, which is he is someone who is a really good receiving halfback. Over the course of his career, he's played three seasons and, you know, always been banged up every single year. His career high in rushes is just 151 in a season. He only has 364 total rushes uh, over the course of his career, uh, 1,680 total yards over the course of his career, but yet he still has uh, 11,180. 98 total receiving yards over the course of his career. So he nearly gets as many receiving yards as he does rushing yards, which is definitely uh, something he's bringing to the table for Philadelphia. And it makes sense when you watch his tape. Like something like this, what's going to happen is it's just going to be a quick, uh, you know, wide receiver or excuse me, uh, halfback screen. They're going to just get the ball in Swift's hands here. Watch how one this play begins. Okay, it appears to be in a pretty good situation. You know, you should be able to gain some yards, but here's where things are unique. You have a player who's out to block uh, a Washington player in front, but there is an unblocked Washington player and actually, you know, multiple Washington players who are kind of in the area, one who is further deep to where Swift is running, but also one trying to chase him down. So it's a tricky situation where you can't fully take your time to try and juke out the player who's in front of you because then you'll get caught from behind. So you have to keep a top speed while still trying to juke out the guy who's in front of you. But as you see, Swift is able to do that until finally he does eventually get brought down, but he picked up the first down right there, which was the job. So again, really good in open space, and these are the kind of things that he's going to bring to the table for Philadelphia, is he can just be another guy who, hey, when you have A.J. Brown and you have Devonta Smith, you know what you're going to get? A lot of players covering deep, a lot of guys making sure they're not getting beat deep down the field, which means some checkdowns could be really open and Swift could actually add a ton of value that way. Not necessarily uh, him just running the football, which is the way most people are talking about with him. And like, there's no better example of what he can do when he's at his best than a play like this, which this is just, it's a superstar level play. That's what this play is. We're watch what happens. Goff is going to take the snap. You see that, you know, no one picks up Swift, but that's okay. You know, they're playing off, but then look at what Swift, Swift does in open space to make those moves and somehow just find a way to get a touchdown out of that situation. Uh, that's just incredible. That's, that's a great play. I'm not saying he does this consistently or all the time or anything like that. No, that's not the case. That's definitely not true. But he does it some, and he does it, you know, relatively frequently, and he does, you know, maybe the last play I showed you very consistently. So for Philadelphia, again, it's sort of a one-year rental thing, but at the end of the day, how much is a fourth-round pick really going to help you compared to a guy like Swift for one year when you're in a championship window right now where you still, you know, uh, you are not currently giving Jalen Hurts his big contract? Currently, Hertz's uh, cap hit is only $6 million. And actually, the way that the contract is structured, interestingly enough, is that in 2024, it'll be $13 million, And then in 2025, it's $21 million. And even 2026, it's just $31 million. It's very reasonable for the next four seasons, really, until it gets up to, uh, you know, $45 million in 2027. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, a, a lot of void years. And, you know, it gets pushed uh, down the road and all that stuff further down the line, uh, which is you know, uh, will hurt them at a certain point. But for now, they really have a three, four year window of being a championship contender. So make the most of it. Trade away some draft picks to see what you can do. It's a very interesting move. But yeah, those are my thoughts. What are yours? Let me know in the comments below. Always love hearing from you. And of course, as always, thanks for watching.